Later I was thinking, I was reading and studying on this, and God began to give me this message. And I want to speak to you this morning, this changes everything. In the book of James chapter 4, reading verse 13 and 14, he says, Go to now, ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city, and continue there a year, and buy and sell and get gain. For as you know not, what shall be on the morrow? He says, well, what is your life? He asks a question here that James wants to know, what is your life? He said, it's even a vapor that appeared for a little while and it then vanisheth away. Father, I pray and I ask you this morning, Father, for the next few minutes here, God, for a great outpouring of your Holy Spirit. Father, I pray, Lord, this morning that my ears and my heart is open and sensitive and alert to the voice of the Lord this morning. As we begin to proclaim and begin to speak forth your word. Father, I thank you, Lord, for the anointing. I thank you, Lord, and we pray for a manifestation of the presence of God to overtake this place here today. Father, I pray, Lord, today and we ask in the mighty name of Jesus for men and women, for sons and daughters who do not have a relationship with you that this message will begin and your spirit will begin to shake them at the very core of their soul this morning. Father, I pray for eyes to be open, for ears to be alert and attentive to your word for the next few minutes this morning. Father, we thank you for what's going to take place in this service today. In Jesus' name, amen. There will be five significant events, or there are, there are five significant or major events that will take place with everyone that is in this building this morning. I want you to please just bear with me today. This is going to be a little bit different message. But I believe it to be very important. I believe also it to be something that will really shake down to the core of your soul. Something that changes everything. I'm praying that from this moment, this begins to change everything about your life. There's five major events or five major uh, situations or significant events that will take place in your life. The first one is life itself. That's where we're at today. I do want to declare this. You have never, you have not always existed, but now you will forever exist. Let me say it one more time. When your mom gave birth to you, it put something into motion that you will forever exist somewhere or another. Yes. The life itself. James asked, James asked this question, what is life? Job and Peter answered it like this. Job and Peter said that life is like a flower and one of them said that life is like grass. Some of you know very easily and then know from the uh, environment that we're in, grass is seasonal. In other words, it's something that does not last forever. It's here for a period of time, and the next thing you know, it vanishes away. Both are referred to as something seasonal. In other words, it's not something that is permanent. Life is not something, or the place that we're abiding in today is not something permanent. We will later on begin to get into that some other events that are going to take place. One thing is for certain that I've learned over the years about life. And that is the uncertainty of it. It's constantly changing. As a matter of fact, for it could be for me that even this afternoon that life itself could throw something at you that could turn your world upside down and change the very motion or the very direction in which you're headed in. Life is constantly going at you. I remember watching a movie one time, and it's one of my favorite movies. I don't come on, we'll sit there and quote it part by part. It's called Tombstone. You like it. That Wyatt Earp had asked Doc Holliday all he wanted was a normal life. And Doc looks at him and says, there's no such thing as normal life. It's just life. You've got to learn to deal with it. Life itself. In life there is no... Some of you may know... Some of you, I'm fixing to ask some ages this morning. Y'all remember the old tape recorders? Yeah. Huh? When you got to a spot in your 
See, this new generation don't know about this. They just hit repeat and just bam, right back to the front of it. We used to have to wait when we heard a good song and hit rewind. <laughs> or when we got to a certain part in the song that we really liked, we hit stop, rewind, stop, play. You hear poop, 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 get back, just play it over and over again. I want to let you know this morning that in life there is no rewind buttons. There is no pause buttons. You've got one shot at it. Come on, somebody. You can't all of a sudden get in the middle of life and all of a sudden reach over and somebody and say, stop the music. It does not stop. Somehow or another, it seems like that even at times the music starts to speed up. Somebody has went from a 45 to a 78. <laughs> Are y'all with me? Yeah. I'm, I, I see some ladies. Y'all can identify with me this morning. There's some kids in here that I lost them then. <laughs> they are trying to find out what 45 and 78 means. <laughs> Life does not have no stop button. Life does not have no rewind button. You can't right in the middle of it hit pause. You've got one shot at it. Now the question that James asked, he says, what is your life? What does your life consist of? was to be the question I would ask you this morning. What does your life revolve around? What does, what is important to you in this life? Are there any spiritual convictions involved in this life with you? And do you live your life with eternity in mind? Just ask him a simple question. What is your life? What does it consist of? What does your day-to-day -day routine begin to consist of? What is it compiled of? Because James asked the question. He says, I want to know what is life. One of the most profound thoughts hit me several years ago. And do not forget this. I write it down. How I look back on my life at the end of my life. How will I look back on my life at the end of my life? What did I do with what God had entrusted to me? These things are going to be important. How did I influence people? And how did I affect the kingdom of God? These are some questions that's not only going, that's coming to you today, but later on that's going to also arise in your life again. Life is your one way into eternity. Everything done in this life will determine and have direct impact on your future. Let me say it one more time. This is your runway into eternity. Everything that you do will be determined or have, will have direct impact in your future of what happens now. Everything about your future is determined in this life. Touch your neighbor and say, this life is important. It's very important. When you live your life in light of eternity, do one more thing for me. Touch them one more time and say, now this changes everything. <laughs> life itself. So we understand, man, this life is important. Well, because what I do, what I believe, how I act, what is taking place in this life is going to be detrimental to me in the future. The next major, it's not the most major event in your life, even though that sometimes we would like to think this, but the next major event in your life for, your, for the young kids is not the day you're going to get married. The next major event that's going to take place in the life of everyone is in here at some time or another. It's going to be the event of death itself. 
It amazes me at all the things that we have prepared for in life, but yet somehow or another, the most major event that takes place next in our life, that somehow or another we have neglected it. Am I in the right place today? That we have prepared for what we're going to eat dinner at today, or lunch, or supper. We have also even thought of the process that what we're wanting to have today to eat. We have went through great extents in preparation. You have all you have prepared your week. You for the ones that didn't have a long clock, you went and bought one because I am prepared. I've got a job tomorrow. I've got to be there at a certain time. I set my alarm clock. Your wife has been prepared out. And you take this in consideration. Some of you know what you're going to do Monday. Some of you know what you're going to do Tuesday, Wednesday. Some of you know what you're going to be doing this time next Saturday. You've already got everything planned, and there's nothing wrong with that. But to neglect the fact that one day your death itself is going to knock at your door and not be prepared for that. The Word of God declares it's appointed unto man wants to die. So in other words, it's an event that has been promised to you. Lord, help me here. Well, let me share this with you. Death is not final. Come on. Uh, all right. Hello, somebody. This could be good news. Or it could be bad news. Death is not final. Death is just your entrance into eternity. If we could say life was our runway, then death was when we took off. Hello, somebody. Amen. It is moving from the seen into the unseen. This is what really troubles a lot of people. What is on the other side? Maybe it's like the game show. I was trying to think of the name of it. Let's make a deal. What's on the other side of the curtain? And is, is that not what sometimes really intrigues us? Is that not what sometimes that people begin to really get concerned about? What is on the other side? What is there? Somebody would even say that is there even life after death? I would tell you this morning without a shadow of a doubt that there is life after death. That I can tell you today that there is a man by the name of Jesus Christ who was resurrected from the dead that proves that there is life after death. Hello, somebody. First thing was life itself where we're at. The next big event that's going to hit us is going to be death. But that's not the biggest event that would take place in your life. The next thing you have another step we're going to go in, we're in step three now. The next thing that's going to be a major event in your life is going to be a day of judgment. I don't know if you've ever heard about this or not. It amazes me at the people that just does not know the fact of what's going to take place with us. The Bible declares that in this life only we had hope. We would be of all men most miserable. Lord, help me here. In other words, if this was it, then I'm telling you, it would be a miserable life. How is it sometimes, Pastor, you get loud, you get excited, and boy, you get all motivated because I know that one of these days when six men lower me down in the ground, that that's not going to be the end, that that's just going to be the beginning. If you think I'm having a part of that, just wait till you see it in. The next after death would be what they would call judgment and rewards. A day that every person, I'm telling you, you're not going to be able to hide. You're not going to be able to run around the corner. Well, I can't tell everything. Have you ever went? Don't, don't raise your hands, please. Have you ever had to stand before a judge? <laughs> uh, 
Lord, help me this morning. <laughs> Have you ever had that feeling way down in your stomach that it's turned over and you said, I don't want to do this? Can you imagine standing before the great God, Jehovah, and being judged? Him, the one giving out the rewards. It is here, judgment and rewards. It is here that you will be rewarded for what you have done, whether it be good or whether it be bad. This is what the Word of God declares. The Word of God declares in the book of Romans, everyone shall be accounted, shall give an account of himself to God. It also says that we will all stand before Christ and receive the things done in this life, whether they be good or whether they be bad. If you want to look at it this way, you're going to get rewarded one way or the other. But this is going to be a major time that you will stand before the Lord Himself and it will be you and you alone and you will have to give an account of yourself it won't be, well, my brother made me do it. It won't be that, Lord, you should have known you need. It was somebody else's fault. No, God's going to examine your life. And He's going to want to know, what did you do with what I entrusted into your hands? What, where was your priorities at? Life is but a vapor. The things you do in this life will, have, will determine how you will spend eternity at your next destination. How. What you do, not what you believe, but what you do will determine how. Not where, but how. Because you're going to be rewarded of the things done in this life, whether it be good or whether it be bad. The fourth thing. This is a tough one right here. I'm going to tell you. It's a kicker. Are y'all still with me? Yeah. Have I got enough eyes attention this morning? Yeah. You know what the next event is? This could be the best. This could be the very best event that takes place in your life. It could be the very worst thing that takes place. Your destination. It's something that's not popular. Boy, I struggled with this morning. God just said, lay it out there. Your destination. Nobody wants to, you know, nobody wants to hear about hell. That don't motivate people. It's just a lie from the devil to try to keep you from hearing about this and thinking everything is just going to be a bed of roses. But I want to tell you the truth. There is not but two destinations. I look at it this way. If you want to throw a little humor in it, hey, you got a 50-50 shot. <laughs> but I'm telling you something. I ain't playing horseshoes. I don't need to be close. That's right. Come on, somebody. Hello, somebody. I don't. I don't need that. No, 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 no. This is the going to determine where I'm going to spend eternity at. I don't need to think I'm just throwing darts at something in the dark. I need to know for sure where I'm going to spend eternity. My destination is going to be at. Yeah. Right. Think about it. How is it that I am prepared for tomorrow and yet I'm not prepared for my destination? Please excuse my language. But this is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Is to be prepared for tomorrow and yet not prepared for eternity. To be prepared and have, uh, have I skipped you in line for what is going to take place Wednesday on my life. And James says, you don't know what's going to take place tomorrow yet. What is your life? He says, it's but a vapor. He says, it's here today or here for a short season. My destination. There's not but two destinations. One of them is heaven, and the other is hell. Your destination will be determined by what you believe. Or let's put it this way who you believe. Hmm. 
The decision that you make about Jesus is going to be detrimental to your destination. Is He the Christ? Is He the Son of God? Is He the sacrifice for my sins? Is He the Messiah? Is Jesus Christ the Anointed One? Is He the Lamb of God that God sent Himself to come to earth to be the sacrifice for my sins? What do I need to know then? Because everything is resting on what I believe about. My destination is going to be dependent on who I believe Jesus Christ is.
eternity. How long is that? You know, I know there's probably all kind of theologians and philosophers that can say, oh, I can take it. And I can define it. Well, I've been thinking about it for 20 years and I'm still at the same point I started when I started thinking about it. I can't grasp it. Because it's a time, it's a place where there is no time. Time is not one You will spend eternity in a place where there is no time based on the decision that you made about Jesus. Lord, help me here. You make it do it. You, it may happen on the decision that you made today. This began to change everything. I'm going to close with this. When eternity becomes reality, it changes everything. Me and my brother, just me and him, he's about a year and a half younger than I am. But we grew up in the country. You can probably tell this by my speech. <laughs> if you came, I can really get country. <laughs> we grew up running through the woods. We grew up climbing trees. We was the kind of kids we didn't have the Xbox and all this stuff. And some of y'all the same way. They didn't have this stuff we come up. We wanted to have fun. We had to go out in the woods down there and climb trees and take hatchets and build something. We also grew up in a time, in a place we lived surrounded by people who farmed. They had cows. We had horses. There was hogs and everything. We grew up hauling hay, cropping the bounce. Now remember as little kids, we had what they would call electric fence. Some of some of y'all familiar with this. If you don't know what electric fence is, get yourself familiar with one of them. <laughs> I remember as little kids, this is how they kept the cows in, this is how they kept the horses in. And I don't know if I'm going far enough back, but some of y'all going to remember this, that my granddaddy had this electric fence box that had this red light on it. And every time that that thing was set off a charge, that red light would come on. If that red light was on or off, and I forgot which one, it means something that had shorted it out. Me and my brother thought it was funny. Because there was electric pieces all around our place. They was everywhere. They was from this high, from this high to this high. Some of them had two or three strands on them. And we would get out there in the day. And if we found one really, really low, because my daddy and my granddaddy, we call him Papa. They all they told us is, the boys, quit playing around that. Well, you know how two old hard-headed boys are. <laughs> What's he gonna do to us? And so they would tell you, that thing is going to bite you. Oh, no, not us. We're exempt from the biting part. For somehow or another, we thought that maybe it's not going to happen to us. And so when we would see one really, really low, we had also been around this fence and heard it when the limb got close to it. It would make a buzzing sound. And you can see the little fire jump off. <laughs> hey, Papa might be on to something. <laughs> but we would get out there and we found one really, really low. We would get us a running start and we want to see the floor up under without getting hit. <laughs> when we caught one sometimes that had three strands on it, I mean, there was, there was some of me and my brother and my cousins, we would get around and we would play around it. Touch your neighbor and say, hey, we just play around you, you better grab a hold of this now. And so when we found one really, really low, it was a challenge to go up under. And yet when we found one that had three strands, we wanted to see who could go through the middle of it and not get hit. And every now and then, a great challenge would be when it was one about this high. Hey, let's see who can jump it. And so we get out of the store and we just run and jump it. Touch your neighbor and say, we're just having fun. It was just a game. And I remember very, very, like it was almost yesterday. 
December, January, it was winter time. And my granddaddy had a horse trough that was out there that was around six or seven foot long and about yay wide. I'm telling you, I come from the country. This is the closest we ever got to ice skating. <laughs> So the electric fence went up, and it was about seven foot high, so you could back a horse trailer up under there and begin to load horses in it. The, the, the water trough was beside it, it was filled up, and this day, my closest I'm getting to ever been to an ice skating ring is the horse trough is froze over. And I remember getting on top of the horse trough as it froze, and I'm doing the slide. <laughs> I'm telling you, listen, I'm sliding from one end to the other. Now I go back and I slide. And I slide. And all of a sudden I slid to one end. And that electric fence popped me on top of the head. <laughs> and that's where they come up with a dance called the electric slide. <laughs> That day, it was too late, but that day, that electric fence become reality to me. I found out that things were real. It began to change how I acted. <coughs> Listen, we not jumping over no more. We're not trying to go up on it no more. Why? Because that thing there will get you. That day, it became reality to me. My whole demeanor around electric fences changed. And when eternity comes reality to you, your whole demeanor will change. This changes. Everything. I want you to stand your feet this morning. <coughs> Thank you, Lord. Can y'all just spare me a few moments this morning? Straight to be in the house of the Lord today. Amen. Amen. Your destination is real. Eternity is real. Is something that you cannot get exempt from. You cannot get a pass. You cannot get, hit the rewind button and say, let's give her another shot. <coughs> this is your shot. This is it. This is real. You know, sometimes what we hate to hear is a message like this. But this is real. This is where the tire is paved. This is something that's going to happen in your life. And you cannot stop it. All you can do is be prepared. Let's praise team if they want to come and greet us for a second. Hallelujah. I want you to bow your heads here this morning. Father, we've come, Lord, today. Father, been obedient unto you. Father, I thank you, Lord, for your word that has went forth this morning. And I believe, in, Lord, today that the Spirit of God is moving. He's quickening people in their spirit today. There's been some eyes that have been opened.
going to stay in Jonah. here by divine purpose. If you're here this morning, have you never made a profession of faith in Jesus Christ? You've never confessed Him to be your Lord and your Savior. This is nothing to be playing with. He declared in the Word of God that today is the day of salvation. Not tomorrow, not next week, not to put it all, is today. There's some appointed times that's coming in your future. Today is the day of salvation. With every head bowed, every eye closed, won't you listen to me very carefully this morning? We've been praying for salvation in this house. If you're here this morning and you've never, let me say, if you know that God has did it for you this morning, you've never been saved. You're unsure about your destination. Listen to me very carefully. I said, if you're unsure about your destination. I want you to sleep your head up here this morning. Is anybody here? You know without a shadow of doubt where your destination is. If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor, Lord and Savior, but I need to renew my relationship. I feel the Spirit of God moving in me, stirring me up, and I want to make a renewal. If that's you, would you slip your hand up to the right back now? Amen. If you're here this morning, feels like to yourself, I just need, God, I just need to be revived. Lord, revive me. Revive me. The altars are open this morning. There's some altars on both ends. You're free to come here. You're free to pray. If you're here this morning and you have sickness in your body and you need people to come in agreement with you and pray, no, there are some prayer warriors here. There's altars that are open. You can come and you can kneel down and nobody's going to mess with you now. You can come also and come in agreement with some of these prayer warriors, this prayer team, and they can pray for you this morning. 